Hello, everyone. Welcome back for our Stranger Things season two recap and review of episode eight. This was called the Mind Flyer. Oh my God. Oh my God. That's Steve Weintraub. This is Mark Riley. We need to start talking about this. I, does anybody have their thoughts collected right now? Sure. Uh, it's what we it, <laughs> sure. It, it, yeah. It's what we call like it wasn't a great episode. Right. I can talk on this and not be excited. <laughs> Sorry. No, uh, listen, it's it doesn't make sense how good the episode is. The Duffer brothers wrote and directed this one. It, it's spectacular. The cold open is amazing. Mm. Uh, before you get to the logo, the ending of the episode is amazing so basically the beginning the middle the end all amazing there's no wasted scenes everyone has time to shine uh the action is great you lose friends you people are coming together it's like i have nothing but i, I was really blown away by this episode i think this is my favorite episode of stranger things including season one ever and i also think it might be one of my favorite episodes of tv ever because i I had a really audible reaction to so many things that were happening. I couldn't sit still with the sense of dread and the things that they were leading up to. I mean, really, the beginning portion had a very Aliens-like feel, mm -hmm. and it, it was scary. It was really tense. I mean, really, just the choice that they made when they all got into that control room together to be like, look at the, sh look at the screens with all the demodogs running around, and then all of a sudden you cut the power. I mean, that is just one example of many, many examples of how in an instant they take it from here to here. That whole portion of it, I freaking loved every second. <laughs> it was like aliens, haunted house, and then, oh, Bob. It's like, you finally get Bob on a level that I'm like, don't die, Bob, don't die. And then I just knew it. I knew Bob wasn't getting it, out it of that so, building. It was so funny, though, watching the two of you because I'd seen the episode prior to sitting down and uh, I knew what was coming. And watching Traitor! Right, well, watching the two of you, though, like, you were shaking and reacting, and I'm like, I know what's coming, and I feel so bad. Look, I had a beard before this episode. <laughs> it melted my face. Um, this, this, yeah, I, I noticeably gasped. I, 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 was, I was holding on to a pillow, and especially for the Bob scenes, because I knew it was coming, but yet I was still surprised, but yet I hoped there was some way that he'd make it out, and I mean... Here we were in episode one saying, Bob's fishy. He might right. be on the other. No. Nope. <laughs> and uh, but no, it was a great theory. And that's what this does well. But this is the culmination of everything that was building, not only in season one, but this every episode that's been leading us here. And I knew we would get Eleven unleashed. I'd been oh, saying it wow. a couple times. I knew she would come back, but it but it was so satisfying. And I had tears in my eyes when Mike saw her. And it was just it was it like you said, Perry, I, I just echo everything you say. This is one of the best episodes of television, I think, ever. I loved this episode so much. Even the quieter moments here really meant something. One of my favorite things about this episode was when they chose to tone things down and keep it quiet. Like when they get back to the buyer's house and you just, you get Hop walking into the room where Joyce is sitting and they don't say anything. They just sit there and stare at each other. And then you cut back to the kitchen and it so naturally leads into Mike making that revelation and just how they discover certain things, things that connect back to season one. I mean, one of my favorite things that with a, in a connection respect is the phone. Yeah. I mean, after all the phone replacement in season one, it's the phone that lets Will know where he is so that they can, so that he can have the demodogs come. There's just so much thought going into each and every single moment of this. Well, the other thing is that because Bob suffers the fate that he suffers, uh, you know, at, at the building, uh, when you're at the ending of the episode and all of them are about to get attacked by demi-dogs, you fear that more of them can get taken down. There's that the stakes have been raised by seeing so much loss mm -hmm. and seeing someone that we've come to care about you know, dying. So, you know, all of us, we're, you're sitting there wondering, is anyone else gonna mm -hmm. suffer, you know, this fate? And you forget that Eleven is on her way back because you're so nervous about their well-being. So when she makes that entrance, it's even more powerful. Did yeah. you get nervous that someone else might bite it before the end of the episode? Yeah, you know, I think the, the, the idea of somebody dying was kind of hanging over some episodes a few, a few episodes ago. I started to wonder who it could be. Are we going to lose? one of our main characters. Bob was a perfect kind of character to introduce and then use him as, to, to, do, to your point, Frosty, to, that nobody's safe because you, you've come to care about him 
His death was tragic yet heroic, and now it could be anybody. I started mm -hmm. to look at Steve for a minute. I was like, oh, God, oh, God. You know, there's certain things. I'm wondering if, you know, maybe in later seasons, you know, but th they're setting up something big here that I can only imagine. I, I you know, I am now seeing, we've, we've mentioned aliens a lot. That's what the Duffer brothers said. At one point, there's some aliens flavor. And I love how they subvert our expectations of Paul Reiser even. Yeah. Because he came in, he's aliens, and you're like, is he going to be the guy? And yet he remains behind to help them out. And I love this. I love this change that they're all working together. I'm wondering where uh, Matthew Modine's character is now that we know he's still around. At least somebody said that he was still around. So I'm wondering how he comes in. But to your point, I don't know who's going to die. I wonder if this is more of, sorry, going to say it, the Empire Strikes Back of Stranger Things, where it's going to end on a cliffhanger or not. I, there are so many things going through my head that I, I'm going to try to grow another beer just to, 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 because I think it's the source of all my power for figuring this out. These cliffhangers are just killer. But as yeah. for Paul Reiser's character, Dr. Owens, I like that moment with him staying behind and, mm -hmm. you know, trying to make good on everything that's happened with Will. However, I will say that it it's still lingering in my mind that maybe he stayed behind for a duplicitous reason. I just and there's there's something he's hiding or something he's trying to do. Maybe. Yeah. You know, right as you said it, I went, Oh, wait a minute. Let me just back that yes. up, put the truck in reverse. <laughs> right. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. But see, that's again, that's what I love about this season in particular is you don't know. I'm you don't wondering. know. And I and I bet that there's a big reveal or not, or just action, it's all there. And I know I'm going to sound like a broken record with this comment, but I don't care. Noah freaking snap. He's, he, is <laughs> he is phenomenal. Something else. And this, this in particular, I, I was really, no, I mean, he's a phenomenal actor. We get it. He was so real in this, but it just went to your point, Perry. I was sitting there going, oh, yeah, Perry, this is, yeah, this is the best. <laughs> I think he's I was, been, I was, like. Ever, I was thinking the same thing because we we all both know uh, your affinity for him, and and he delivers. I mean, when he's tied up and he's screaming, you know, uh, "Let me out!" or uh, is that what he says? "Let me out!" Yeah, let, let me, me. I think it's "Let, let me, me go." At yeah. the beginning, and what is he screaming at the beginning of the episode too? He's lying. He, he's lying. Something yeah, because like Mike Mike knows that he's the spy, and he's freaking out, screaming. He's lying. Yeah, I mean that that is hard for an adult actor to keep doing that, and let alone for a kid actor. I mean, no, he. He delivers a fantastic performance, but the truth is it's the whole cast. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. there's no weak link. It's not like, you know, you, you look at someone and you'd be like, ooh, that person's not cast right. Yeah. You know, like you buy into all of these people and that's because the great writing and the great direction. You know, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm very, this is just a phenomenal episode of television. Mm -hmm. The Morse code thing was a very nice touch as well. And, and by and the way, believable. Yeah, See, that's the thing. Very. I was wondering how are they going to make it where Will can communicate with them that I buy into, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I'm willing to buy into the Morse code. Yeah, and well, I'm willing to buy into the Morse code because it's something that's already established in this season. We get the reference to Bob starting the AV club, so we know this is a group of kids that are capable of doing something like that. So I totally bought it. And one of the coolest things about that is how your eye is drawn to him before Hop even figures it out. Like I saw him tapping there, but at the same time, Noah's face is so captivating. You're looking at every little like muscle twinge in his face to see, can I see him trying to communicate somehow? And then it turns out to be that it was such a great reveal. I love 11 at the door too, especially because I had thought that that, the shot that we got in the trailer, I thought it was coming in this moment. We got it in the last episode, and I thought it worked really well there. To see it repeated here, similarly, like I was saying earlier in this review, it brought something to another level. I thought it was so well done. Any final thoughts before we watch the finale? I mean, final <laughs> thoughts. Everything feels organic. This is some of the best storytelling I've seen in, in television across the arts. It's just so good. I love it so much. So that final thought there, I cannot wait for this next episode. And I'm also going to be very bummed when Stranger Things season two is over yeah. and I can't binge and I can't watch it. I can't talk about it with you guys. We could rewatch it though. Okay, we'll rewatch uh, it. I just, I just can't wait to, to see the finale. I, uh, I have high expectations with the Duffer brothers also writing and directing the finale. Me too. All right, let's get to it. So this was our review and recap of episode eight. We're moving into episode nine right now. You can watch that video soon. Hey everybody, Mark Ellis here. Thanks for watching this episode. You want to watch more? Then click up here. Or you can click right here for more great content from Collider. If you haven't subscribed to Collider Video, do so right now and share this vid with your friends. Thanks for watching.